So now on this one, I didn't run the simulation live. It took about 12 minutes to run the simulation. Uh, much too long for a demonstration. So let's take a look at the results of the Monte Carlo analysis. So again, you can see that for every one of these waveforms, we now have uh, lots of outputs, 25 of them. And let's go ahead and plot those all at the same time. Let's say as a polar chart. So you can see, you can get to see that frequency response fairly easily. Or, you know, we could just um, double click and plot them all together. And what you can see when we look at this is that the, f the frequency is shifting around quite a bit up here. So let's go ahead and zoom in and take a look. So we're moving from well, let's see. Let's get a cursor on here. We've got one peak over here at about 2 kilohertz. And another peak out here at about 1.5 kilohertz. So, you know, the frequency we were looking for, well, the frequency that it's designed for, is right in here at about 1.7. So we've got quite a, a quite a uh, variance in where our, our bandpass filter is actually operating. And that's what would cause the product design to fail. And it was, again, it was just based on part tolerances. So as we move around, um, we can take a look. Let's just go ahead and plot one of these signals and then do a quick calculation on it. So let's take this out one. And let's look at the frequency domain and give us our give us a bandpass calculation. And you can see what it's doing is it's telling us what our F low is, what our F high is. And unfortunately, because we have these cursors in the way, some of these numbers are hard to see. So let's move those out of the way. So our F high was 1.74, our F low was 1.48, that's our 3 dB bandwidth. And, you know, it's it's interesting to look at the frequency response, but it's also interesting to look at the time domain response. Because what you see... What we can see is a shift in attenuation of the signal. So down here at 47, we've attenuated the signal quite a bit. So if we're, this input waveform is at 1700 hertz. So as the frequency response shifts, instead of amplifying the signal the way we want it to, what we're getting is an attenuated signal. And that's what a bandpass filter should do, but when it's set to, to the wrong frequency, it's, it's not going to work right. So we've got all kinds of different results fairly quickly. What this allows you to do is quickly go through your design and start to figure out how tight the tolerances on the parts need to be in order to meet your manufacturing yield requirements.